Sentience is the, the capacity to feel things and to be able to consciously experience feelings such as hunger, thirst, pleasure, pain and so on. To paraphrase veterinary surgeon and animal welfare scientist Dr James Kirkwood, there may be good reasons not to damage a rock or a radio or a rabbit, but only in the case of the rabbit is that reason anything to do with what we would perhaps describe as welfare or well-being or quality of life. And that's because we have good reason to think that the rabbit is consciously aware and has the capacity to experience feelings unlike the other two inanimate objects. And that's why, as James Kirkwood notes, sentience is the fundamental, morally relevant basis upon which animal welfare concern rests. Cognition and sentience are different. Uh, sentience refers to conscious awareness, whereas cognition refers to thinking and problem solving. The two are linked, but I think a key point is that an animal doesn't have to be clever to suffer. So humans may have some advanced cognitive abilities that allow us to enjoy music and explore space, but the similarities between us and other non-human animals in morally relevant ways refer to our shared emotions, feelings, the likes of pain, hunger, thirst, pleasure, and so on. Sentience is profoundly important to veterinary professionals and all those who care about animal welfare. Uh, veterinary surgeons and veterinary nurses are committed to protecting animal welfare, but sentience is a prerequisite for animal welfare. We have an oath to protect animal welfare, and therefore sentience underpins our oath. There are opportunities for veterinary professionals to recognise and account for animal sentience at different levels. So we, veterinary surgeons, and our veterinary nurse colleagues have direct face-to-face -face interactions with animal keepers and owners where we can advocate for animals, recognise their sentience and promote their welfare. Veterinary practices and hospitals like the one we're in today serve as animal welfare hubs within communities containing credible expert opinion and advice which allows our understanding and knowledge of animal sentience and animal welfare to be conveyed to the broader community. And then at the level of veterinary associations we have the opportunity to contribute and stimulate um, public debate about how we use animals based on our understanding of animal sentience. That gives us the opportunity to challenge societal norms and have influence at the political level. And I think in that way, the veterinary professions have great opportunity to improve the welfare of animals across many different channels. Veterinary surgeons and veterinary nurses care about animal welfare, which is what society expects which is consistent with many global veterinary oaths, including ours here in the UK. And being animal welfare focused means prioritising the best interests of our patients, which we always seek to do. But that in itself requires, first of all, recognising animal sentience, of course, and then competently assessing animal welfare, um, including all relevant determinants of an animal's overall uh, quality of life, and having a good evidence base for the conclusions that we draw. But that only gets us so far. Science tells us what is, it doesn't tell us what should be. And it's often the case that we then need to make sometimes difficult decisions based on what we know. That's where we need uh, ethics, both veterinary ethics and animal ethics. Veterinary ethics recognises that veterinary professionals have duties to different stakeholders which are sometimes conflicting so we have duties to animals, our patients, their owners and the businesses that, uh, that, we, that we work for, veterinary practices and hospitals and we have to balance the interests of each whilst always seeking to prioritise the best interests of our animal patients. So that would be captured by veterinary ethics. Animal ethics is more about the questions, often difficult questions, of how we ought to use animals in society. And veterinary surgeons and veterinary nurses are a credible and authoritative voice in those debates as well. Um, I think our views may can seem inconsistent in the way that we apply them to different animals. So I guess a classic example of that might be rats, 
uh, in some circumstances loathed as vermin, on the other hand, much loved uh, as pets and sometimes coming into, into this hospital for treatment. Um, in other cases, relied on for, for medical advancements and, and scientific research. Clearly, the rat, the species rat, is the same in each case, but we allow different uh, harms to be caused to them in, in each instance. Whether or not we see a mammal, like a pet rat, or a dog, or a cat, or a reptile, uh, which we occasionally see, or a pet bird. We have at our disposal um, analgesics, for example, pain relief, which we can use across those different, uh, those different animal species. Um, and that's exactly right. Um, we're we're recognising sentience and wanting to act upon it because of its impact on welfare in each case. Keeping animals as companions is a, a universal uh, human activity uh, across cultures and, and throughout time. Um, one trend that I think we're seeing here in the UK and probably other Western countries um, is an increasing humanisation and an increasing tendency to view animals as humans. Um, on the one hand, it's, it's fantastic that our pets, our companion animals, are being increasingly valued and regarded as fam as, as valued family members, but we just need to guard, I think, against anthropomorphism, which perhaps would tend to uh, view a pet as a little person in a furry animal suit, which of course isn't the case. Um, they are distinct species, they have needs and preferences that are different to our own. So I think the trick is to love them and value them, but to try and take their perspective and view the world through their eyes as best we can uh, and then to provide for the needs um, as we understand them. I think the benefits to veterinary surgeons and veterinary nurses of recognising and accounting for animal sentience is primarily job satisfaction. The reason that many of us came into veterinary science and wanted to uh, work uh, with animals in a veterinary capacity is because we, are, we care about animals and we're motivated to improve their welfare. Uh, and whenever we do that, we, we derive job satisfaction. But there are other benefits. There are, of course, benefits to the animals themselves that go on to enjoy better quality, uh, a better quality of life. Um, and I think it's also important for vets and nurses in terms of our, our professional reputation and our, and our status. Um, Delivering high standards of animal health and welfare is a public good. It's what society wants, and that's right. And we can very much help deliver those high standards uh, of, of animal health and welfare, both in our practical daily veterinary work and in the contribution that we can make to helping inform society uh, and informing public debate about how animals are used. There are also benefits to, to our clients, to, to farmers, to pet owners. In the case of farmers, there can be uh, strong economic benefits to improving animal welfare, which is important. And I think equally important, um, the sense of pride that many farmers derive from husbanding their animals and caring for their animals in ways that give those animals a good quality of life. Similarly, pet owners value their, their pets as family members, they want them to have a good quality of life and when that's demonstrably achieved they too are satisfied. So a secondary source of satisfaction for vets and vet nurses is helping our, our clients and, and animal owners to be satisfied. Sentience and animal welfare science are, are fascinating areas of research, they're relatively new areas of research but some of my own veterinary colleagues are very much involved in that research. They don't always work in uh, a practice like this. They work in academia, they work in uh, experiments which are helping to elucidate these important questions of what can animals feel, what can't they feel, where are we justified in providing a certain level of care or concern and where might our efforts be best guided. Uh, that is all important and fascinating and a very encouraging area that many vets and, uh, and increasingly vet nurses are getting involved with.